Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. In my last video, I created this set of stacking boxes. Now, some questioned whether this was a segmented box set of boxes or not. Well, the fact that it is separate boxes and separate lids and bases does not make it segmented. What makes it segmented is that I used a segmenting technique known as stave segmentation in order to create the cylinder from which all of this was turned. Now, we often get confused about terms, so what I have done is created a, web, a page on my website to start defining some of these terms as I understand them. I invite you to go to the website and check them out and see if you agree. If you disagree, let me know. We'll have a discussion about it. This week's video is really not about segmentation at all. It's about the lid that was created for this box. This lid is actually an eccentric turning, multiple axis, actually skewed axis, not parallel axis, but skewed. So let's make a decoration that is totally unique, can never be duplicated, and put it on top of these boxes for this week's video. To begin, I'm securing a small round of three-quarter inch oak to the face of my jaws with the live center. This will be adequate while rough rounding and cutting the first tenon. No need for tape or hot melt glue. With the tenon ready, I am reversing the blank into the chuck. Now to mark out the tenon to fit the topmost box to form a lid. Test, cut, fit, cut, and tell it fits. I don't want a suction fit. Somewhat loose is okay. This is for a normal person, not a wood turner. Next, I'm marking for a mortise for an expansion hold on the bottom side of the lid. If I cut and finish it well, I should never have to work at it again. Now to reverse the lid again to shape the top side of the lid. This is the background to the eccentric decoration so it can be very simple form, but sand it now. Now for the first skew axis. I've mounted the lid to the chuck tenon with double stick tape. As I approach the first cut, the lid shifts and Elvis leaves the building. It appears that double stick tape was not enough for this piece. I tried it again, but it was not going to hold. Now for hot melt glue. This should fill gaps better and have a tight, tough hold. Okay, now for the first real skew axis. I use the tailstock to help indicate where the new center will be, but then I slide it out of the way and tighten the chuck. Then easy does it with a small spindle gouge. Any mistake will have to be cut out or become a design feature. Sand this feature now. Now. 
Now I'm starting the second set of eccentric cuts. The tail stock indicates the new center. I'm moving the chuck's ball and tenon until the tail stock points to the spot I want. Be sure to tighten the chuck before turning on the lathe and starting the next cuts. Just a few light cuts will do the trick before sanding. For the next feature, loosen the chuck and rotate the work piece to a new center as indicated by the tailstock. A few light cuts will do the job before sanding. I'm using a variety of designs to test how they look. Let's do it again. Loosen the chuck. This time, I'll be just a little bit off the primary axis. I'm aiming to be somewhat in the center of the three previous cuts. One last time. The cut will intersect the three previous rim cuts somehow. We'll have to see how it looks after sanding. I took a side trip to the microwave to loosen the hot melt glue, then apply walnut oil with the rest of the project, let it dry, and buff to a nice shine. I should never have to have a plain old lid again for a project. Unless, of course, plain is exactly what I want. Until then, why not have something more to look at? It will always be unique and never exactly duplicated. With that, we'll see you again next week with another wood turning video. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and tell your friends. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Then keep on turning. Until next week, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.